Okay, so today we're going to review Hillary's website. Um, taking it all in. I assume that's going to take me to your About Me page. Okay, so family, maternity, couples, engagements, newborn. Same thing up top um you have the parallax scrolling and your blog parallax is this image basically where it scrolls like that um okay So based on the, uh, actually the giveaway is the bottom bar. It looks like you're hosted on Wix. For some reason, all their menus look the same, or at least the bottom footer bars always look the same for Wix. So I'm almost, I would put a paycheck on it that that's who you're hosted with. Um, thoughts on your main page. Take a look at your code real quick. Okay, so something I'm noticing that I think is going to be a recurring theme because not only, you know, yourself, but I think almost 90% of the websites I reviewed um, in the last two weeks have had this issue is that you're, for one, I'm guessing your images are not optimized, at least by looking at them, but we'll find out that later in the SEO checks. But also the most important thing that I am noticing in here is that your images aren't properly named. Um, the reason you want to do that is because Google can't read images by pixels. It can only read the data that you give it. So file names, alt tags, that type of stuff, titles, all that is very important because Google, you know, that's how Google finds you and Google values your content. So for example, <clears throat> so when you type newborn photography in Google Images, all these are showing up. And I'm betting you all these are properly named, alt tagged, everything. Right here, you can see it. Salt Lake City newborn photography. Everything's tagged correctly, and that's why it's showing up. If you have, you know, just a bunch of file names, something like that. Google has no idea what your, you know, what that image is. So you can see all these are correctly tagged. Mm, I wouldn't do it like that, but close enough. And obviously if she's on the first page, she's doing something right. So that's just something to keep an eye out for. Um, you want all your images tagged correctly before uploading. And then when you do upload them in your admin panel, you can set your alt tags and in there, you know, just set it to kind of just like you saw, you know, your location is a good start and be descriptive of the image, you know, um, maybe kids on rocks, family on beach rocks, you know, something like that, because, you know, not, not that anyone's going to search for a photographer who takes pictures of kids on beach rocks. I'm not saying that, but every time you show up in Google images, Google treats your page and your images a little bit better. So when it is time to suggest you for a newborn photographer in Salt Lake City, um, you know, you may come up faster or, you know, you may come up before your competitors. So everything is about getting Google to like your page. And image naming is one of those things. So we'll take it's loading. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, that's kind of hilarious, that face. Um, okay, so we'll go back to that, but I have some thoughts there too. Um, okay, so besides that, everything on this page is for the most part okay. I like that you're selling yourself right away. And I know most people don't do that. They save it for the about me page. And I like that you're selling yourself right away because, you know, there, I, I feel like marketing is 50, 50. Not only are you selling your photography, people have to like that, but they have to like you also. This shows you're playful. Um, you know, and I think, I think to make that connection with potential clients, you need that. And having it on your main page is a good thing. So, to be honest, I don't think I like this design right here. This just overall design. It's just, from a design perspective, it's totally, I don't know, just awkward and um, unoptimal, I guess. I would maybe, maybe if you can make this full size to cover this whole box, um, that may be an option. Actually, let's just see what it looks like when I shrink a little bit. Because I have a uncharacteristically larger monitor, so sometimes that's affected. So it kind of spaces it better. So how I think you would actually be able to fix this, and because this looks fine right here, I'm totally cool with this, the way it looks when I have a smaller monitor. Um, but how I would fix that is use larger images in here or just set the slider to be larger. That way when someone with a big monitor opens your, your page up, it's not so tiny like that. And then for the people with small monitors like this, it'll shrink it down for you automatically. So you don't have to worry about that, but I would potentially use larger images or a larger slider. I don't know how it's set up in your admin panel. So go back to my regular view. Um, is this going to be Instagram or just random photos? Okay. It looks like another gallery. A lot of times, and the reason I say that a lot of times, people especially the square images it's like a link to their instagram but they don't actually say that so you have your facebook link here and your instagram quick look at those go away um something i notice you sell yourself a lot And you may think I'm going to yell at you for that. I'm not. I Like I said earlier, I think you do need to sell yourself and you should be a shameless marketer. I've seen your photo now probably more times than I've seen anyone else's on their website. And I'm totally okay with it. I think it's a good thing. I've seen some websites where they don't have any photo of them. Well, how do you make a personal connection if you don't have, you know, if someone can't even see you? Yeah, words are great, but... The visuals is what matters. That's a pretty great photo. Um, okay, so nothing noticeable on there. Everything looks great. Um, good job. Five star in reviews. And if you can, Get more reviews, obviously. That's, I mean, I know that's a given, but the reason you want to do that is not for Facebook so much, but more so for Google, because when you, once your Facebook page is actually linked and attributed to your website, your review scores will start to show up on Google also. So, you know, the more the better for that. Just something to do. Like, I basically send like an automated email out like maybe two weeks after the shoot and ask them for a review or something like that. That's always a good way to do it. <clears throat> Same thing on Instagram. Everything looks great. And again, you're selling yourself. Cool. Um, 
it's up to you, but you may want to get a, you know, at Hillary Gardner photography email. I don't know to me. And I know a lot of my associates to Gmail or to Hotmail always seems a little bit unprofessional. We kind of give it a second look. If you have that option, do it. If you don't, I'm sure it's not the end of the world. Um, so, okay. Your social media looks good. And I like that you only have two down here. I know Squarespace, um, gives you the option for a hundred of them. Keep it simple. I, I, no one cares about your MySpace profile or, you know, just do the majors. Um, cause it's less confusion. People are more likely to click when there's one or two icons. Oops. Than they are when there's 30 of them. So that's a good thing. Um, Nothing else to note on here, and I know those images go to the same place, so I'm just going to click up here at the menu. You are from St. Petersburg, Florida. Me and my wife lived in Bradenton for five years. Or, not maybe not five years, but a few years. And we saw St. Petersburg often. Um, now you live in Salt Lake. Furry children, clean, bright, and vivid. I love that, that you described it. Um, most people do not do that. They don't tell, you know, tell, even though you can see the portfolio, they don't tell the potential client about their style. And they should, because everyone's style is different, and some people may like that clean, bright, and vivid look, and, you know, some people may not. But at least, you know, you're... You're basically qualifying your client, you know, hey, this is what I offer. If you want that, great. If you don't, you know, get out. And that's a good thing because that means you're wasting less time dealing with a client who may not be, you know, a good fit for you. So again, selling yourself. I like all the words. The only thing I may, and this isn't the end of the world, I would maybe reconsider is the St. Petersburg, Florida bit. Um, because what, I don't know if you want to associate yourself with that, not because St. Petersburg's bad. I don't mean it that way. I mean, Google, well, then again, Florida is kind of Florida. Um, if you, you live there, you know what I mean? But, um, from the search engine optimization point of view, you may not want Google reading that and associating you with that. Because Google will take your content and kind of make some assumptions. So this is how Google works now. And this started about maybe about a year ago. They're going much more personalized. So let's do this. Newborn photography. So let's say I need a newborn photographer uh, for my ugly little kid that I don't have. Um, it's going to show me personalized results. So here's Ellie Bell, which... Is actually my former studio mate, um, but she is local to me, and I didn't have to put in a location. All I did was put newborn photographer in, and that's going to happen to you too. If you type that in yours, you're going to get local results also. Ashley Nicole, I don't know her, I don't think, and Buttercup, I don't know her, but um, and also this is kind of what I was telling you too with these reviews. See how it kind of shows up. So having more reviews is a good thing. Um, yeah, so the point I'm getting at, I'm sorry, that took so long to get to the point I got distracted. Um, but the point is that you may not want to be associated with St. Petersburg family photography or, you know, anything like that. Um, so sorry, I'm trying to come up with a solution. So what I would probably do, if you really want to leave that in, sounds like, you know, that may be an important thing to you. I would put Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City photographer everywhere else. And it kind of looks like you're already doing that on your blog. But what I would do is actually put it in your footer also. That way it appears on every single page and Google's going to um, prioritize that more than, you know, just being all one page. And I see what you're doing. Like you're... You know, all your keywords, not that Google really uses keywords too much anymore, but I'm sorry, not keywords, tags. 
Google absolutely uses keywords. Um, but like WordPress or even Squarespace tags, they don't use so much anymore. Um, I see what you're doing and that's good, but you can accomplish the same exact thing just by putting it in your footer, which should be there anyway, because here's the thing. If I come to the front page of your website, I want to know where you're at immediately. So I know you're in Salt Lake City. And that's a good thing. That's another plus for you because, you know, you want to make it clear right away because the, the thing that would like, you know, piss me off the most is coming to a website and, you know, taking six pages to figure out they're halfway across the country. Now that I've fallen in love with their photography, I can't hire them. So I think you're on the right path there. Um, and I know I'm kind of dragging, so we're going to speed it along a little bit. So your Hillary page is all good. Nothing wrong with it. I like it all. Um, the only thing maybe I would do is just for readability purposes, move this with love Hillary and put it underneath your paragraph just for natural flow, really, because you have the meet Hillary up here and then you have the text and then this kind of just goes over here and it's kind of weird. And I think just for spacing and that type of, you know, purposes, just put it underneath, but that's, that's really nitpicking. So. So I have some concerns on this page. Basically, as I told you before, Google prioritizes text. There is no text on this page whatsoever. So you are getting nothing from this, only negatives. You are getting absolutely nothing because even this, you know, even your pricing is in image format. I stand corrected. It's not. It's, uh, let's see. That is so weird. I don't even know how you did that, actually. I could figure it out, but I would have to look through your code. I stand corrected on that and I apologize, but, um, because this isn't on your main page, let's see. That's so weird. Maybe I don't know how you did that, but Bravo. Um, but I, I it's still, it still may not be attributing to this page and I would have to look into that. But, um, even besides that, even if you have this, this text and it's, you know, fully being counted and credited by Google. It's not enough. You need more. And personally, just from a business perspective, I don't think there's enough information there for a customer. I think the customer wants more information, but not too much, you know, just what can they expect from the session? What makes you special as a photographer? So far I've seen, you know, you haven't done anything differently than any other photographer in the world. And, and this, you know, in such a saturated market, and I know Salt Lake City's, you know, kind of rough. There's just a lot of photographers there. Maybe not as many as Seattle, but definitely, you know, there's a good amount in Salt Lake City. So you got to set yourself apart. And so far, I've seen nothing that does that. So give them more information and tell them why you, they should hire you. Um, and again, these photographs, if they were tagged, they would probably okay. And, you know, give them alt tags and that type of stuff. They would probably be okay. But right now these are doing nothing for you. Um, so at best, you're getting a little bit of text love from this box if it's counting it. But besides that, you're not getting much and it's not helpful. Um, so another thing is there's so much white space down here. And I, at first I thought it was maybe just Google being, uh, Google Chrome being silly, but I checked it on, uh, internet explorer or edge or whatever it's called now. And you know, same white space. Um, Google's not going to like that for one. And because they, they think you may be trying to trick them. Like maybe there's hidden content down here or something like that. And just from a design perspective, it's a little weird. So I would get rid of that. Um, I got a feeling all these pages are going to be the same. Okay. So again, white space. And something else I always suggest to clients and it's totally up to you. It, it may just be dependent on how many shoots you've had, or, you know, maybe you're a little bit new and you don't have 30 shoots to choose from, but um, your portfolio, I kind of like to stick to two images per shoot per page. Why is that? Um, I, I think because when I see this, let's see, I see approximate to me, like at first glance, I see two total shoots here. 
I see, you know, blue shirt, blue shirt, blue or sweater, whatever it is. I see, you know, that's one shoot. And then I see the girl in the white dress. Um, so I see two shoots and to me that says inexperienced and you may very well be. So, you know, as you do more shoots, just keep swapping them out and only share your best work. I'm not saying any of these are good or bad. I'm not, you know, judging any of the f photos, but always show your best work. So that means if, you know, maybe picking a random photo, maybe this one right here isn't your best photo anymore and actually i love this photo but let's just say you know for giggles this isn't your best photo anymore or it's not in your top five or whatever get rid of it rotate them out because there's two reasons to rotate for one if a client visits your website more than once they're going to see new content which is always a good thing plus google sees that you're always updating your website with new content and they're going to like that too um so yeah don't be afraid to show off your best work. And I even do that on Facebook when I was, you know, in business, I would rotate the photos out of my Facebook and delete old posts that, you know, may not, um, show my best work anymore because, you know, as photographers evolve, your work always changes, right? It's always, it always gets better. Every single shoot gets better in ways. So you want to keep rotating that out because you don't want to see, you don't want, you know, clients seeing your work from two years ago and they will look, People are crazy. So they will look at your work. They'll scroll, you know, all day on Facebook just to see your work from two years ago. Um, so same thing with these images, I would say. I would say just get that on the page somehow. Even if you did like, you know, a, a text section up here first thing and then put this gallery below, that would totally work. And again, on all these sections, more information. Um, more text, that type of thing, because Google values, values text more than anything, more than any image in the world. And again, same thing with here, give them some variety. I'm seeing blue shirt a lot again. And yeah, a lot of this Fabio looking dude. Um, I mean, the photography is beautiful, but you know, just that first impression from you know, the people, it, to me, it screams inexperience just because you only have maybe two shoots per section. Cute. Um, uh, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse. We've talked about it a few times now. You know what to do on these pages. Man, looking at all your images, I need to move to Salt Lake. We drove through on the way to Washington, but we didn't see all this. Okay. So now for the blog. I want to try to speed it up a little bit. I don't want you to have to sit through a two-hour video, and we still have a lot to go over. <clears throat> Hey, yo, visiting Florida. I still love that image. It's a good one. Excuse me, sneeze. Um, so I'm not going to look at all your blogs, but let's look at it. How do I get back to Internet Explorer? That's okay. So we'll look at a blog. Good amount of text. I like that. A lot of people just blog images and just leave them there. And that's it. Like we've talked about, that doesn't help you in the least. But you have a good amount of text. Maybe a little bit too many photos at this point. There's a lot of purple in this. Um, so... So a few things I would do. I like your call to action. For one, link it. Link them. If you know, link that to your contact page. And it kind of does, but nobody would know that, and it wouldn't work on a tablet. Um, so just make a direct link there. 
less images because no one's reading this. It's too far down. By the time, you know, most people get halfway down, maybe on this because there's so many images, I would say average is like at the most 10 images per blog. And that's absolute most. Like if you have 10 pictures, you absolutely love because these images are so similar. You're doing almost nothing. You know, it's not worth it. So yeah, pick like your 10 favorite images and blog those. But the most important part out of it is the text and you have some good text there. Um, let's see if you're consistent with it. Use first names if you can. It's not a privacy issue because there's, let's say your name is Nancy. There's 8 zillion Nancy's in the world. So you're not going to identify them by that. And it's the same as Nancy essentially for privacy reasons. And you want Google to pick that up. Google's not going to pick up N, but you may get some residual traffic from a Nancy, though. And I'm sure her name is not that, but she will now forever be known as Nancy. Um, so, again, maybe, you know, a little bit too many images. Oh, something else I was actually going to say. Get rid of your comments. Just turn them off. Get rid of them. Because it makes it look like, you know, photographers, and it's not just you, it's all of them. Unless they're doing some kind of, you know, BS website ladder, which just means a bunch of photographers are commenting on your post, which doesn't do you any good whatsoever. All comments are always empty. It's it's just the way it is. Like, you know, you're not CNN, so you don't have a thousand people commenting on your posts. And to me, it kind of just makes it look like, you know, no one's visiting your website when that's, you know, most likely not the case, but it still kind of makes it look like that. So I would just get rid of them completely. They add nothing to your website in the least. Um, so blogging, less images. Your text is good, but more is always better when it comes to that. So we can get rid of these. Um, you can keep your tags if you'd like. But like I said, they're irrelevant to Google. Google doesn't care about post tags anymore. Because essentially you're just linking to your own website a few hundred times. So Google is kind of, they kind of trained it to like ignore it. If you find your users like it, okay, that's one thing. Keep them. Okay, I clicked a tag and that was just awkward. That's not you, that's just bad programming. For some reason, Tag Pet Friendly is coming up with all these. Weird. Okay. So, back to this. Okay. So, we're finished the website portion. And overall, pretty good. You just have some small changes to make. You probably have, you know, out of all the sites I reviewed, probably the least amount of changes for most people. Or maybe not the least, but pretty darn close. I would also get rid of this top button too. No one uses that, man. Um, I've actually done heat maps on websites where I can actually see what the viewer's doing. And I've never seen a heat, a heat imprint over this button. Um, like, no one ever uses it. So. Um, and it's just distracting to me. So. Give me one second to process this. Okay, so we're going to go through this really quick. There's nothing terribly huge issues here. So I'm going to go through them quick. And if you have to, most of these you'll need to change by... Um, going through Squarespace. It may not be stuff that you can do on your own. So mobile devices, and I've actually verified this. Your website's okay on mobile devices, but it's not perfect. Essentially, it's saying a lot of your tap targets are too small, which basically means that's your fat finger check for Google. They're basically saying, yo, you need to 
make your links a little bit bigger. I'm guessing it's going to talk about that little menu up there. You may have the ability to do that. You may not. It's dependent on your theme and how much freedom that uh, your web host gives you. More importantly, this one is actually huge. Your page is not secure at all, which means, like, see this page? You get the secure version. Um, Google actually prioritizes and finds that important. Now, um, this just started this year, actually a few months ago, I believe. Um, but they value secure websites. Like when I design websites now, I don't even not do it. Like I don't even think about it. It's not even a thought. I get a secure certificate. And it's even if you're not selling anything, even if you're not doing commerce, um, like just a contact form can still be stolen if your website's not secure. So Google is actually penalizing websites now for not being secure. You want to get secured up. Um, Squarespace, I believe, has just recently offered this. So you may be able to, like, at least I saw a blog post of them saying, hey, we can do this now. So if you can do that, do it. I don't know for sure what their deal is since I don't use them. But I think you have a way to do it now. Um, this no skip domain content link is something that I've never not seen pop up. So don't worry about it. Some sites, it's just not necessary. It doesn't make sense for the website to have that. Um, the language not ideal, not declared ideally. That's a code issue and there's nothing you can do that unless you're going to go in and edit the theme. Basically, Google likes you to tag what website your, or I'm sorry, what language your website is, you know, designed in which is kind of weird because they could just, they have the ability to auto translate. I don't know why they just can't tell, but you know, it's weird. So here's all your page speed issues, but I, I'm not a big fan of this one. And we're going to go into more detail up in one of these tabs. So don't worry about that for now. Um, again, with the sitemaps, we're going to go into that. Essentially you do have a sitemap, which is good because that means Google will find you. But you don't have one for users, which, you know, uh, most people's browsers rely on. Again, it may not be something that's in your control. You have to look in your website and see. Um, the modified sense is actually, I don't want to say it's super important, but it's a good thing to have. Basically, Google will ding you a little bit if you don't have this. It kind of tells your website or tells the browser, like, say I went to your website yesterday. And then I went to it again today. So if you had this tag, this modified tag, it would tell my browser when the last time your website was updated. If it says your website was updated last Wednesday and I was here last night, that means I don't need new data. So I can load the same exact data from last night. And what happens with that is I save the bandwidth, you save the bandwidth, and everybody wins. Well, if you don't have that, the page doesn't know or the browser doesn't know when the last time you updated was. So it has to reload that page every single time. And that's bad for website speed, which also, you know, Google also tracks. Don't worry about the findable links because we'll get to that. And that's not something that will matter for your typical website. Okay. So your page size is good. Four megs isn't bad for a website. You can do better, but don't worry about it. Um, this thing saying your page speed is 0.7 seconds. I did not find that in my testing. I've run a few different tests, and this is the test I ultimately believe, and we'll get to that. Um, but I didn't find the seven seconds accurate in my own testing, and I loaded it on two different browsers, and it was more in line with this result. So we'll get to that. Um, you have 71 uh, HTTP requests. And what that means is it's, it's uh, loading 71 different things from your website every single time it loads your website. Um, I, I want to complain, but I really can't because, you know, as photographers, we tend to have a lot more than other people. Um, just because we have so many images, like, you know, most websites don't have 10 images lined up at the bottom. So, you know, yeah, you can cut it down. Do you have to? No, it's probably not hurting you that badly. 
if you I, I will tell you what happens if you optimize your images and tagging them won't help but tag them anyway but yeah optimizing your images will actually help that significantly the number will remain the same but the time will take you know half um so yeah your as i told you your website is a little bit rough on mobile um and as this thing says that does factor in the search results especially when you're searching for mobile because Google prioritizes sites that are, you know, designed for mobile. It's called AMP, A-M-P. Um, and that's one way that you can make a web page great. Um, responsiveness is not something you can just do, you know, yourself. You would actually have to either get a theme that supports it. Or it may even be a toggle in your current theme. I don't know anything about it. Um... So, yes. Okay. Um, so, your headings. Basically, Google treats your website like a term paper. It wants everything ordered using header tags. And, you know, you, a page usually starts with H1 header tags and that's your title. And then your subsections is H2 and H3 and etc. I think it can go up to, I don't know. I've never tried it, but it can probably go to H800. I don't know. But, basically... H1, H2, H3, you know, are the ways to go. H1 is required, I would say, for, you know, if you really want good results. H2 is mostly needed. H3 is optional. So, basically what that means is, like, this should be an H1 if it's not. It may be. This would be a good, yeah, see, this is an H2, so you don't have that H1. Um, I'm sure I sound like an idiot talking about H's, but Google actually wants your stuff formatted better, um, just so we can read it, and that also tells it that, hey, you know, this is well-organized content, so let's send people here. So if you can, change that to an H1. And that, that goes with all of your web pages too. So anything that has a lot of text. Again, make this an H1. This is probably either, come on, either an H1 or an H2. H2 again. I'm assuming same font, same size, H2. And you can keep this one H2 and that's perfectly cool as long as this one's H1. And what you can do is just set H1, like if you like this style, set it to the same exact thing. You know, H1 and H2 can be the same exact font size and color and all that stuff. Google doesn't care about that. It just cares about the actual tags. So it'll look exactly the same, but you'll be properly tagged. Again, SSL security tick, uh, certificate. We've already talked about that. Um... We've already talked about all that stuff. So here's where I was talking about with the optimized images. Look at all these reductions. And you can get your page speed down significantly. Because look on this web. On this one you're saving over 60% or 66% of your image. So that means that image would literally load in more than, you know, less than half of the time. You know, if it took... You know, if it it would be significantly faster, your whole website. Because, you know, you may think, oh, 31%, no big deal. But this is just your, this is just the results from your one page. So imagine if all these images were loading, you know, even 40%. Let's just take the average number. This one's 97 freaking percent. Let's see what that image is. Well, that's awkward. You know what I think it is? I think it's one of your little arrows or something like that. Yeah, you can kind of see it down here, actually. But, you know, 
Even if you reduce your page size by 40%, that's going to speed up your load time significantly. That's one of the biggest things that nobody does that everyone should do. I was actually going to rant on it tonight in the group, you know, from a review I just did. But I think I want to write an article on it because that's how important it is or, you know, an article or a guide. Because that's really actually how much, how important it is. Like that's the biggest thing I see on every single website that nobody optimizes their images. You can use, um, geez, what's it called? I think there's one called tiny JPEG. And, and there it is actually. It's called JPEG mini. You can use this. This one's free. Um, and what it'll actually do is compress your image without any compression whatsoever. It'll compress the actual file, but you won't notice any pixels or anything change. It'll all look the same. You won't notice any ding in quality, nothing. But you lose so much information that's unneeded anyway, that it's totally worth it. Um, actually, here it is. Here's my favorite program and the one I use. I actually bought the Pro version because of, you know, how good it is. But... And I think the free version will actually let you do like 20 a day, which if you're just doing like random website stuff, you know, maybe a gallery a day, that's perfect. You don't even need to buy it. But, you know, I used it enough where I thought it was worth it and it was actually pretty inexpensive. So, and basically all you do, and you'll see like none of these images are changing quality whatsoever. And this photo is reduced by, you know, 3.3 times, which is huge. Um, crap, if you're willing to spend a hundred bucks, this one comes with a Lightroom and Photoshop extension. But anyway, even if you used a free version, totally cool. Use something though. And you don't even have to use these. I have no, um, I have no financial incentive. I don't even know these guys. I just bought it you know, myself, but you can use any tools like that and it'll improve your speed so much. Um, let's get back to where we were. So that's going to improve your uh, load time significantly. And that's actually, that's actually the only issue actually had on, you had on this website, which is kind of crazy because for page speed, just because of that one thing, it ranches an F and actually I'm not buying that. That's a little too high. I don't think your page took that long to uh, load, but we'll run it again. I, I found in my own personal testing that this result was, you know, pretty close, about three seconds. So I don't know why that website just said 57 seconds or something. Estimated wait time, 39 seconds. So we'll come back. Um... So this is going to be a lot of redundant information, but I always like to run things through a few different checks just because a lot of times one will miss another, you know, one will miss something and another one won't. Again, H1 tags, H2. And I just don't think you have any on your uh, main page. So that may be why. Um, yeah, this is what I was talking about with the Facebook that all, you know, once you actually connect them, It'll allow you to do that. There's plugins you can install to do it manually. Uh, actually, I don't know if there is on your host, but, you know, WordPress typically does. Or you can use um, this addthis.com. Again, I've never used it. I don't know anything about them. So use it at your own peril. Um, more than 20 requests. We've already talked about this. You have a lot of scripts, but again, that's out of your control. It's just a bad theme um, programming. These are little minor tweaks that you can, you would normally be able to make, but since you don't have, uh, you know, the ability to program, there's not much you can do about them. But be aware that they're not really affecting your site too much. We're talking milliseconds, if that. Um, your IP address doesn't direct to your domain name. That's normal on shared hosting. Nothing you can do about that. The only thing you could do about that is move servers and go to a dedicated box for yourself which, you know, gets significantly more pricey. Um, again, secure. We've already talked about that. Oh, wow. Um, you may want to submit a ticket to your po uh, to your host and, you know, let them know that that's happening. That's not normal and not a good thing. 
you most likely don't have anything to worry about there. You know, hackers really aren't after your photographs. They're more so looking for financial stuff like that. But, you know, just you always want a secure website. So that may just be something you should do. Um, we kind of already talked about that with the Facebook stuff. Uh, nothing you can do about this. That's uh, your host. Okay, so done there. Let's go back to page load. So yeah, I don't know why this page loader thingy is saying you're taking so long. Let's, uh, but now I'm interested. So let's do Alt F5 to do a full reload. So yeah, that looked about you know, that actually looked under three seconds for me. And that was a full page load, like, you know, cleared my catch, everything. Um, so no big deal there. So I think, you know, the three seconds is a little bit more accurate than the 31. That's kind of weird. Um, but again, this thing's reporting the optimized images. This is something you can't do unless you have control of the theme. And this is just bad coding. I don't know why. What is this JavaScript file? I have no idea why they're loading JavaScript from some third party website, but that's nothing you can do. Let's see. Oh yeah, React. They should, uh, I don't know why this isn't hosted on your own domain, but that's just silliness. Um, that's nothing you can do about that. So moving on, and this will be the last thing we need to talk about is just page speed. And we've already talked about a lot of it because you're actually, you know, for the most part, your page speed's pretty good. And just for giggles, we'll do it again. So yeah, you're still coming in in about three seconds, and I actually believe that result. Or are you? This is taking a little bit longer than it should. Well, it also tested from Australia, too. So, it, look, if you did three seconds from Australia, which, you know, usually adds two to three seconds to every website, you're doing fine. Don't worry about that. The combined JavaScript is nothing you can do. Again, nothing you can do on this. So, essentially, what... Um, either Squarespace, I believe it was, what they're doing is basically storing your files on a different web server that's usually faster and, you know, has uh, data redundant backups. That way, if one storage thing goes down, you know, you're not stuck. Now, what is kind of stupid is that they're loading many files that you don't need, you know, uh, Latin, Hebrew, Japanese. Like, I'm seeing a lot of stuff in here that I'm familiar with that you actually don't need. So the fact every one of these that you don't need and they're loading just slows your website down a little tiny bit. Not, you know, not enough to care. But when you add, you know, when you have a hundred of them, yeah, you, know, you know, it may add, you know, half a second to your time. So nothing you can do, though. Um, I mean, I don't think there's any reason to look in here. I, everything looked good to me. Yeah, nothing really to note. So, overall, you're doing pretty well. Um, let's go back. Yeah, so I pretty much covered everything. I think overall, you're doing well on your website. You know, well designed. You just need, you need more content, um, more words, essentially. You just want to give Google a reason to find you. Um, and right now, they don't have too much of a reason besides all these beautiful images that they can't read. Um, so give a lot more text. I think you're on the right path. You're doing good things. Keep adding your photography to more pictures you take. Like I said, I don't know how far you are into your business journey. So you may be totally new or, you know, you may have just a few shoots under your belt. I have no idea. Just give it more variety that, that way, just from a customer perspective, you know, you look like that knockout pro that you are. Um,
yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, you're in... Yep. I, I have nothing else to say. I can't come up with anything as, you know, as hard as I try. You're, you, um, you have one of the better websites I've reviewed. And I know it seems like I nitpicked on a lot, but, you know, I have to because you do a lot right. I like your logo. Um, I think you picked the perfect cover image. You know, if that's the first website or first image I see when I load up a website, that's a pretty darn good image. Um, beautiful photograph, beautiful woman. So, yeah, I get it. And I like that you're selling yourself immediately. So, yeah, I to I'm totally cool with this web page. I would make this bigger. Um, I think you're on a good path. And it seems like most of your issues that you have, you know, are out of your control. It's mostly the theme. And I think when I did your SEO research, you weren't really being found as much as you should be. And that's because of your lack of text, to be honest. Um, so if you improve on that, you know, and give the clients more information just from a business perspective, you know, because it's going to help you twofold. This just isn't enough, even if this is counting. And I, it probably is, to be honest. I Like I said, I would have to look up to see how they're doing it. I wonder if it kind of treats it as its own page or it attributes it to the previous page. Um, but regardless, even if it is counting it, you need more. And not just from SEO perspective, but for your clients or your potential clients. Because this isn't enough information for me. To be honest with this, I wouldn't hire you. Because I want to know more about you. I want to know more about the process. Um... Maybe don't give a sale right away. I, I guess, you know, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to make that call because I don't know your business model and I haven't seen your book. So, you know, maybe that is a big seller for you. Maybe that converts people. I don't know. But I think in most situations, leading off with a sale or a coupon or anything like that is bad news bears because then they kind of accept it from the start and then they will keep asking you for discounts and discounts and discounts. Um, so I wouldn't even do that, but that's, that's totally up to you. Um, so yeah, cool. I, I, I like what you've done with the website. It does, definitely needs some work. But I think you're on the right path. So I, I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, you know, or if it was or was not, you know, let me know. And yeah, keep it up. Just good work. Just more text. So yeah, I hope this worked for you. I'll talk to you later.